I'd like to see this draft as well. Can we enlarge it? I think this could also be an interesting constellation. It does hug the road very nicely indeed. Since the introduction of the new C-Class, the 190, the C-Class has been the number one large volume car for us. It's the car which is favored by the largest proportion of our customers. It's obvious that the C-Class is highly relevant for us. We have done everything to satisfy our customers with this Mercedes. With our new C-Class, we wanted to achieve something quite simple, namely to build the best C-Class in the world. What we're doing right now is to develop a more precise understanding of our target customers. At the end of the day, it's a question of developing a product which ideally meets the demands of our target customers. The idea is to create a product that's a nice piece of work from the customer's perspective. To this end, we have to know exactly what our target customers think and what their values and demands are. If we succeed in meeting the demands of both groups of target customers with one chassis, we have achieved our goal. In design development, we started out to create an independent C-Class. We set out to design a car that has a dynamic, sovereign and stylish character. In this respect, it's important to note that we have two different radiator masks for the first time. There's the centrally arranged star, and there's the conventional radiator grill for the elegance and classic lines. For the first time, we opted for two different front ends with different looks. We have endeavored to give the car a rear end that is as compact as possible, to create a broader impression while at the same time reducing the height of the rear end. We have also integrated the rear light unit so as to create flowing lines from the side and across the entire rear end and to give the car a broad and beefy stance. I am heading the C-Class test department. Our assignment is to test the complete car and to develop a large number of excellent individual components into a perfect entity. Our second assignment at a later stage of development is to find any faults and identify any problems before the cars are delivered to the customers. We have test catalogs which we work off step by step in the extreme heat of California in the desert, as well as in the extreme cold of Sweden. How does a door open at minus 25 degrees centigrade and also at plus 50 degrees centigrade? We test the entire telematic system and the entire electronics of the car. Each component is once again tested on board the car. The snow absorption test is a time-lapse procedure to simulate real-world driving situations. In this test, neither the intake ducts nor the air filter must clog to such an extent that the engine is no longer supplied with air and may even have to switch to the limp home mode. Instead, the engine has to work properly throughout the test period.
Endurance runs on test rigs have been performed at an early stage. The components have already been individually tested before being installed in the car. Our department tests the components once again on board the car. Here we are engaged in digital testing prior to hardware testing because it is not possible to procure the hardware proper in the early stages. It's a question of improving the car during the digital stage to such an extent that we can start hardware testing at a high degree of maturity. The new C-Class was the first for which we digitally verified the complete vehicle from development via production through to after sales. This means we checked at a very early stage, even before the hardware was produced, whether the car can be built and also easily repaired in the interest of the customer. We have verified all this. Would you please drive along this comfort testing track and tell us whether the impression of high comfort is confirmed by the hardware? From the outside, the simulator looks as if it consists of two seats which move in some form. Once you are seated, an impression of realistic driving is instantly created in the tester's mind. We do everything we can to create vehicle behavior that is as realistic as possible, although we know only too well that there will always be certain differences between simulation and reality. With this simulator, we are able to obtain a subjective assessment, something that cannot be achieved with a computer. On a global scale, this is the first time such a simulator is used to transform the down-to-earth data of the digital prototype into perceptible handling and ride characteristics, even before the first car is built. Noch bevor das erste Fahrzeug gebaut wird. In this test, the car crashes into a deformable barrier, this blue aluminum barrier at a speed of 64 kilometers per hour. The barrier is to simulate another car involved in an accident, which is why it's deformable. Other cars also have crumple zones. The speed of 64 kilometers per hour is the one at which many collisions happen out on the road. Higher speeds are rarely recorded. At first glance, you can see that the basic structure is intact. The door is still closed, the door cutout is okay, deformation is not excessive, and all the restraint systems were triggered. The airbags were deployed and the belts were tightened. These are the first items we check. After all, we know the car inside and out. After five years of development, we know what to look for. <laughs> Opening the doors is a crucial criterion in rescuing the occupants after an accident. Either occupants must be able to climb out easily themselves, or the rescue services must gain easy access to the entire interior compartment. <laughs> Pre-safe is an additional feature which is very important to Mercedes-Benz. In simple terms, it is a system which prepares the occupants and the car before a crash. The occupant, for instance, is moved into the optimum seating position by the belt tensioner or the seat adjustment system itself so as to be subjected to the lowest possible loads in a crash. By means of sensors monitoring lateral acceleration or braking maneuvers, for instance, the system recognizes that a crash cannot be avoided and gives the occupants maximum protection before a collision.
Agility combined with sporty dynamism and outstanding comfort on long distances. That was the primary goal we set ourselves. Added to this, of course, was what we discussed a minute ago with respect to telematics, namely a clear layout and convenient operation of the entire car. It's this combination, rather than a specific criterion, that has to be observed. It's the sum total of all the features of a car which has to appeal to the customer. When we have achieved this, we can be sure of having developed a good car. When I fold away the display, command remains engaged and yet I have an uncluttered dashboard with a sporty design. And I can still have the functions of command displayed to me in the instrument cluster. I am very satisfied with the system we have developed here. I believe that we have created a benchmark in Europe where telematic navigation systems are concerned. We have incorporated a large number of functions, including new functions, which can easily be operated in a specific Mercedes style. We have also dispensed with unnecessary detail features. We have now been developing the telematic system for well over three years with quite a large team. We are all highly committed and we have come up with a really good product. The value of a system reveals itself only when it works with 100% reliability under all conditions, in all weathers, in snow, ice and in the dust of the desert. That was the primary focus of our project, given the fact that we not only received positive press reviews on the subject of quality in the past, that was the major challenge of our team, to link up and control all the development activities, and to pursue this quality approach throughout the process, from the first drafts through to the finished car. The issue of verification of the electrical and the electronic components plays a highly important role in this respect. In this context, the experts repeatedly refer to HIL, which stands for Hardware in the Loop, and means that all these components can be installed in a lab, in a car on the table, so to speak, long before the car itself is produced. On this model, you can switch the lights on, activate the windshield wipers, and operate the windshield washer nozzles. All these functions can be tested and developed in this laboratory setup. And the software can be optimized. It's a major success factor if you can install components in the car which were tested at a very early stage and have reached a very high quality level. This is then followed by trial driving sessions in Namibia, Sweden, Laredo and many other places where tests under extremely difficult climatic conditions can be carried out. I'm heading the chassis and acoustics tuning team, and at the same time I'm responsible for the verification of the complete car, the new C-Class, within the project. In our team, I am working together with several engineers in tuning the chassis, steering, and acoustic behavior of the car to achieve what the customer will ultimately perceive, namely the agility and ride comfort of the car. Oh, here sieht so aus, wie wenn die Straße wieder komplett wegschwemmt ist. Jetzt fahren wir mal langsam davor. 
Testing here in Namibia forms part of our endurance testing program throughout the world. We come to Namibia because of the large number of rough roads here. We perform up to 99% of our tests on very dusty gravel tracks on which the bodywork and the chassis are subjected to extreme vibrations. On these sharp stones, it can be one way or another. It just depends. With a bit of luck, everything will be okay. You don't even see the stones when they are as sharp as these. If you're unlucky, the stone cuts through the tire wall, and then the tire looks like this. In the aerodynamic development of the new C-Class, the focus was on substantiating the sporty appeal of the car, as perceived by the customer, by means of aerodynamic properties which are as neutral as possible in terms of design. One special feature is the ventilating rear light unit. By means of a pressure gradient, air flows from the underfloor to behind the rear light unit and from here out again through slots in the surface of the rear light unit, thereby creating a specific airflow breakaway in the rear end area. This airflow routing replaces a spoiler. I just don't believe that this wind noise is caused by the mirror. Never. I just don't believe it. The guys will be thrilled. What a great steering. The return forces are high, but not so strong that you have to struggle against them. My task is to manage the overall process and the entire team, and to monitor the development of the product from the first idea through to the market launch. We have created two main lines. Comfort, in combination with dynamic handling, is the focus of one line. A decidedly sporty character combined with high comfort is the hallmark of the second. With these two lines, we want to inspire and retain our regular customers and to win over new, enthusiastic customers. In the final analysis, the system is a damper inside a damper, which we have incorporated at all four wheels. It means that we have accommodated two dampers in one unit. On an uneven road, the softer damper character their own, meaning that the setting on rough roads is a highly comfortable one. At higher speeds and a sporty driving style, the second damper with the harder damping characteristics is activated too, as to ensure perfect tire-to-road contact. It's the sort of comfort that is fun to drive, as we put it. We have already covered many thousands of kilometers with this car, and we are highly satisfied with what we have achieved with this new system. The advanced agility package will be optionally available. This package permits both specifically comfortable and specifically dynamic motoring. 
At the heart of this package is the adjustable damping. It's an active system which is complemented by engine and transmission control. In the sports mode, it permits an extremely sporty driving style. This allows us to hold our own in competition. With all-out motoring pleasure in the sports mode and all the typical features of Mercedes Comfort in the Comfort mode. Either mode can be had at the push of a button in the center console. A developer always wants to go on optimizing that probably runs in our veins. We always find something to optimize. But I think we can be very satisfied with the car in its present form. This is another fine-tuning round in the final stage when all the production tools are ready and our colleagues would say, that's it, let's tackle the next project. Then we have to bring them together once more and ask them to do it again. This is what a Mercedes is all about, and I think that's the stage we are in right now. We could now start building the car. Anyway, we have to start in January. But we'll use the time we still have and then come up with a matured and attractive product. I've driven the new C-Class over thousands of kilometers. I really look forward to this new car.